Hello and welcome to the second part of this tutorial about creating your counter and having it rotate and also then looking at how we can make it sort of bounce to a stop. So we can make it bounce very slack or we can make it bounce very hard. We can play around with the parameters by adding an expression that already ships with After Effects which I'll show you a bit later on. Now the first thing to say is in the last tutorial I showed you how to create a duplicate and move it around so that we can duplicate layers all the way around and use a simple expression so that we can move them out. However, we've placed these different compositions. These are compositions 0 to 9, as you can see down here. And I've placed them so that they also are in 3D space. So if I just move my camera around, you can see I've got my black layer in the middle. And I've placed them all in 3D space, again, with all their anchor points at the same place and linked to the rotation controller the way that we did in the last one. So I'm just going to reset the camera. So let's talk about rotation. I need to actually rotate this layer around so it's going to go step by step by step. And my plan is to have it say still for a second and then half a second to do its rotation and then still for a second and half a second and still for a second so on all the way through. So I need to actually work on my rotation controller which is that null object. And I really need to select just the rotation so R for rotation. And then I need to animate it around the X dimension because that's the dimension that's going to make it go up and down. Okay, so that's the one that we're looking at. Just reset that by right clicking on it, reset. So it's a simple job of animation. We want it to start at this point at the beginning so we can cl simply click the stopwatch. And then if you're not very good at dragging and you want to be pretty more precise, you simply click here in the timer and do one point and enter and you're at one second. Now we want it to stay still for one second, so the simple thing to do is just copy and paste this keyframe. It's already selected, so copy is Command and Control C, and paste is Command and Control V. So Command or Control, depending on whether you're on a PC or Mac. So now that we know for a second it's not going to move, and then I want to move forward half a second. Now I'll quickly say, I'm on a PAL system, which is 25 frames per second. You may be on an NTSC system, in which case you want to go forward 15 frames. So whenever I go for 12, you're thinking about 15. You'll get what I'm doing. So I'm just going to click in here. I'm going to go 1.12, which is one and a half seconds roughly. Hit enter. I'm now at precisely the right place. Now I know I've got 10 layers, and they all need to go 36 degrees. So rather than scrubbing this, I can simply click in there, and I can go 36. Hit enter, and it's gone backwards. So if I need to do minus 36, so I simply click on here and go minus 36 and then one showing. Now I want one to stay where it is for a second. So I'm at 1.12 here or you might be at 1.15. Simply want to make that 2.15 so I can click in here at just 2.12 in my case. Enter, gone forward a second. I just need to copy and paste that keyframe. So copy, paste. Okay. So it's definitely going to the right place. And if you've moved your current time indicator around a bit and you're not 100% sure you're over the keyframe, remember you've got the little keyframe navigator here and we can click on it, make sure we're on the next keyframe. So next I need to go forward another half a second. For me, that's going to take me up to three seconds because the other half of my 25 frames. So I just click on there three points and enter. So I'm at three seconds. I now need to go minus 36. So I click in here, make sure that it's not selected, and just go minus 36, enter. And that's brought me up to the next one. I need to go forward a second, so click, four point, enter, and copy paste. And then I'm going to go forward again half a second. So for me, that's 4.12. For you, it might be 4.15, enter, and so on and so forth. I'm going to go through the whole timeline and do this. I'll come back to you when it's done. Okay, so we've got the full rotation. If I do a quick round preview for you, you'll see that you've got quite a nice animation as each layer comes up. Very smooth, comes to a stop. Maybe it's not what you want, maybe it is what you want, but what I want to add on is a bounce. So I want each layer to sort of come to a stop and judder slightly, and we can play around with exactly how much it judders and how it moves. And to do that, we're going to use an expression that ships with After Effects. 
Now I want to show you where to find that expression if you're using I think CS5 and upwards it might be in CS4 it certainly is in PC versions sometimes people have had a little bit of problems with Max finding this particular one however I have included it in the project file so you should have access to it but if you want to find it it's in a slightly odd location so if I just show you with my explorer so I'm in the root folders for my After Effects and if I just go into After Effects CS5 for example go to support files well actually for Mac users it'll be in the root folder After Effects CS5 but for PC users you need to go into support files and then you need to go down to templates it's a template folder and in template folders you've got this thing called expression sampler the expression sampler is the one that we're going to be using okay so it's under support files templates on PCs I believe in Macs it's under the Adobe After Effects root folder and it'll be under templates again but if you can't find it just download this project folder and it's actually included okay so we're going to use something from the expression sampler and if I open that up you'll see that it's got a whole bunch of expressions and I have done another tutorial in the past that shows how to use this so I'm not going to go into great detail but I'm going to say that we're going to use the one that says pendulum at marker and in fact I'm going to double click to open it up and there it's pendulum at marker and if I hit the space bar or just hit home and then the space bar to push play you'll see that we've got a sort of decaying pendulum whenever it comes to a marker now little thing to notice if you select the layer and go to the effect controls you'll see that an effect has been applied and we need to take the effect as well as the expression so select the effect and copy its control or command C and then go back to your composition and choose your rotation controller which is your null layer and control or command V to paste it so the expression controls effect has been added in and we've added this first because the expression itself is going to be looking for this little effect that's been applied so that we can actually control it so now we go back to the pendulum at marker and we select one of the layers any one really and then go EE -E quickly EE -E, and it shows us the expression that has been applied and if you want to see all of it you kind of have to hover between the layers till you get that little two-way arrow and pull it all the way down and move it up a bit so you can see everything that's in there so even more to see there you go that's the whole of it but I'm not going to go into any of this I'm just going to simply click once so it's all selected and then copy again so command or control C go back to my original composition and my rotation controller then alt click or option click on the stopwatch for X rotation it highlights its default setting and paste so command or control a V and it is now applied but you have to hit enter on your number pad or just click away so that it is actually in place so now the expression is applied we haven't got any errors it's working it's using the effect up here but we're not going to see any end result until we apply some markers now we want the markers to apply at the moment that it hits the stopping keyframe so to get to the right keyframe I'm going to use the the keyframe navigator go forward till I get the stop keyframe and I want to add a marker the marker is added with an asterisk on my number pad if you don't have a number pad the other way is layer add marker okay so I'm just gonna go through this adding markers very quickly so marker there and then navigate forward to the next stop marker there and again each time the layer stops that's when I want to apply my marker and again all the way through And if this was looping, you could possibly even apply a marker at the very beginning so that it comes through and it bounces on the zero as well. But I don't think I need to do that. Now, if I play that through, I've done a little RAM preview. As I say, this is using CS6, which is using this wonderful cache memory system so that it remembers I've used this in a previous state when I was preparing it. So if I do a RAM preview, you'll see how it looks. It's got a big wobble on. Every time the layer comes up, We've got massive wobbles, but it is wobbling when it finishes. So what I simply need to do now is go up to here to my effect and change the amplitude, the frequency, and the decay. 
And I'm just going to do a couple of bits and pieces. I'm going to change the amplitude down to something like 10 or 11. And I'm probably going to increase the frequency a little bit so it's a little bit faster because I like it to look a little bit tight. So maybe 5. And I'm probably going to increase the decay a little bit, say also to about 5. And I need to do a RAM preview on that, I suspect. So if I do a RAM preview on that, you can see what the end result is like. And you'll see that we've got a very tight wobble on there. Not a big wobble, just a little one that makes it look like it's on a fairly tight spring. So that's the end result by playing with these bits and pieces. So I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm simply going to say, here is the effect. You've got your markers. You've done your rotation. I'm going to select my camera again and just show you you've got the whole thing in 3D space. You've got it rotating. You've got it bouncing. You can have it with a very slack bounce as it came in. Or you can have it with a very tight and taut bounce depending on what you want to do and how you want to make it work. And of course you can go in and you can modify these compositions, you can add what you want to them, you can have video layers, all kinds of interesting backgrounds, very easy to do. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you're going to have fun playing with this. Download the project file and have fun. My name's Andrew Davis, and thank you for watching. <laughs>